we've got to get to the rundown, and uh, we've got to give a big special shout out to one of our recent sponsors, Greg Robinson. Thank you so much. You have found the latest in everything cool, so let's get started with your rundown. The nominees for the 90th Academy Awards have been announced, and big genre films are doing surprisingly well. This morning, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences announced the official list of nominees for this year's Oscars. Surprisingly, Guillermo del Toro's fishy romance movie, The Shape of Water, leads the pack with an impressive 13 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Lead Actress for Sally Hawkins. The film is amazing, but this still comes as a surprise because Academy voters typically snub genre movies like this, often preferring more traditional kinds of romances. This just makes my heart sing. I'm so happy that he's getting the recognition he deserves. This guy has built an incredible history of fantastic movies for us, but The Shape of Water is uh, superb. It's his best work, and you guys definitely have to see this. This Oscar push is going to mean, you know, tons of attention on this deserved movie. Congrats to Guillermo del Toro. Another big film uh, doing surprisingly, surprisingly well is Jordan Peele's horror movie, Get Out, which has uh, picked up four nominations, Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Lead Actor for star Danielle Kaluuya. Get Out seemed to have everything going against it. Not only do horror movies never get nominated, but the predominantly white Academy voters have overlooked similar movies with African-American casts in the past, Pretty good for a first-time director, and it feels like everybody's kind of waking up on the Academy there, which is fantastic. Uh, here's one that's not too big, not too big of a surprise. It's Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. It's picked up eight nominations, including Best Director. This is actually Nolan's first time being nominated for the award, having been snubbed for The Dark Knight back in 2008. That's a surprise. Now, Fox and Marvel's Wolverine send-off, Logan, which has been nominated in the prestigious Best Adapted Screenplay category. Uh, this is the first superhero movie to be nominated in that category. I think it deserved a few more awards. That was absolutely outstanding, that movie, or at least nominations. Incredible film, and let's hope it gets this one, man. That would be amazing. Now, Blade Runner 2049, my favorite movie of 2017, one of the best films of the year, didn't get any of the prestigious Best Picture or Best Director categories, which is ridiculous, but it did sweep five of the technical categories like visual effects and sound editing. Cinematographer Roger Deakins has also been nominated. That guy, if he doesn't win, everybody's drunk, and they just have to stop the awards right there and like turn to each other and say, what the hell are you thinking? Because Roger Deakins should win. Uh, and if he doesn't win, it will be a travesty. Yes, Blake agrees with me. Genre movies like Get Out and The Shape of Water did surprisingly well, but another big genre film was completely snubbed. Wonder Woman hasn't been nominated for a single award, and not just in the more prestigious categories like Best Picture and Best Director, but also in the more superhero-friendly categories. This comes as a surprise and follows a big Oscar push on the part of Wonder Brothers uh, and the part of Warner Brothers in D.C., they should have at least been nom nominated for costumes. I mean, all of those Amazonian warrior costumes were incredible. And there were some pretty fantastic effects in that thing, too. Uh, it also could have gone for best ad adapted screenplay. And, you know, frankly, Patty Jenkins directed a hell of a movie there. She should have been up, man. That's crazy. 88-year-old Canadian actor Christopher Plummer has become the oldest actor, actor to ever be nominated for an Oscar. His role in Ridley Scott's All the Money in the World earned him a Best Supporting Actor nod. His, uh, he, and this is especially interesting because he was only added to the film at the last minute. You guys have heard this story. The role was originally played by Kevin Spacey, but he was replaced after troubling sexual assault allegations surfaced against him with Ridley Scott reshooting his scenes with Plummer, and they did it like within a few weeks of the thing having to hit theaters, which is incredible. So uh, good on you, Christopher Plummer. Winners will be announced at the awards ceremony on Sunday, March 4th. So, of course, we'll follow up with all those winners. How, how do you guys feel? Did you, do you think that uh, people were uh, correct in their nominations, or do you feel like some of the other movies got snubbed in a big major way? I mean, I'm, I'm reading a list here that seems to stand out. The Wonder Woman snubs don't make any sense to me. Uh, you can let us know. I know we're b behind on the uh, when I'm reading this and when you guys are seeing all this stuff, but uh, Blake will shout him out. Uh, now, you don't have to wait much longer to start playing the new God of War. Woo! Sony has announced that the new game, simply titled God of War, will hit the PlayStation 4 on April 20th, 2018, which I have now declared uh, an international holiday. 
okay? <laughs> Everybody go home and be with their PlayStation 4s and have some quality time with their PlayStation 4s. Uh, there's no season pass or loot boxes, but there will be exclusive in-game skins for those who pre-order the game. There will also be three different collector's editions alongside the standard version. I don't know if you guys have ever checked out the collector's editions and behind-the-scenes stuff on previous God of War games, but they've always been spectacular, and I have uh, reason to believe that this will be no different. I'm excited for this. There will, um, uh, there's going to be different statues and art books and all that stuff. But I want to see the behind the scenes because building these things always crushes the teams. I can remember Corey Barlog and David Jaffe just like basically crying in their beers, going, "Oh my God, I survived another God of War." Uh, it's amazing that Corey went back. Uh, I love this series. It's an incredible game franchise. Um, I think that. Uh, Corey and his team, and I, I brought it up in my conversations with Corey Barlog, they've done the right thing. I mean, they, they hit the peak, no pun intended, with where they could go with Kratos, and they had to kind of uh, give him a soul. They had to give him a little bit more. You know, he had to grow, just like all of us are growing as players, and the industry is growing with its content, and uh, this was the, way, the right way to do it. I think they could have kept going with hack and slashers forever, but... If they want this series to be indelible, they needed to kind of twist and and shake it all up, you know. Just like we saw with uh, with uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, you know. I, I I'm pulling that into this conversation about God of War. Sue me. Uh, so very psyched for this thing. April can't come soon enough. April twentieth, incredible. I think I'm going away during that. So before that time, then, Sony has got to create a Switch like PlayStation Four so I can play that on the plane. Okay, so Sony, if you're watching. Come on. Uh, Rocket League players will soon be able to party with everybody they want. Well, almost everybody. Uh, developer Psyonix has announced that cross-platform party support is coming to all versions of the game. Cross-platform multiplayer is already available, but with party support, it means that players on one platform will be able to join the party of players on another, making it easier for people to play together. At least... Most people, can we guess who's not in this party? The PlayStation 4 version of the game will only support, uh, still only supports cross-platform play with the PC, while all the other platforms, including the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch, are able to work with any system players want. Sony has notoriously been reluctant to allow cross-platform between the PS4 and other consoles, despite the fact that it's already possible from a technical standpoint, so hopefully they come around soon. All we can do is make videos like this and tweet at them and send them emails and send them messages on our PlayStation 4s. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I posted something. This is interesting, actually. I posted something about the potential lineup of games, and God of War was one of them. On the PlayStation 4 this year, Sony could have one of its best, if not the best year it's ever had if all of these things hit, you know. Uh, and I'm not going to list them all off right now, but you guys know. They've got some exclusives on the way that are, like, ridiculous. Uh one of the comments I got is, I wish I had bought a PlayStation 4 instead of an Xbox One. And then I saw a thread between the buddy and, and other buddies. And this is not meant to slag Microsoft in any way. But I saw that they had chosen the Xbox path because of friends choosing Xbox paths. And then they see all of these exclusives. But this is one way that Sony could you know, bring a little more harmony into the world is uh, doing a little cross-platform party play. So I want them to do that. Uh, you know, Minecraft is cross-platform between other consoles. I, I just think the idea that there, there's more ways to connect bridges in games as opposed to creating clubhouses in games and having to make allegiances in games, the better for the business, the better for everybody, and uh, the more people start to play and chatter and talk about games and express their passion for games, that's what the games industry needs. Not like, you can't have this, nah, 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 nah. That's bullshit. That's, that's you know, we've got to move past that. That's an old way of thinking for video games. All right, let's face it. Most video game movies are pretty terrible, but here's one that probably won't be any better. Uh, I thought you were going in a different way, Blake. According to The Hollywood Reporter, explosion-heavy filmmaker Michael Bay, of course, is developing a big-screen movie based on the Duke Nukem series. Not a moment too soon, Michael Bay, with professor, <laughs> professional wrestler John Cena in talks to play the lead role. This will be his finest performance. It will take an actor of a certain caliber 
to be a mis, how do you say it, mis, misogynistic? Yes, misogynistic douchebag uh, that runs around and looks in the mirror and primps and shoots and kills everybody. I'm not a fan of Duke Nukem. That is also uh, from a BS era of games that it's, I'm glad, it was great in the time. It was funny and goofy, but yeah, it, nothing since has come close to being fun, and I suspect this movie will not be either. He certainly looks the part, Uh, And although he's been in movies before, it remains to be seen if he has the chops to bring the video game hero to life. Michael Bay knows how to push a button to create explosions. He's set to produce the film uh, through his Platinum Dunes production label, although there's no word yet on who might sit in the director's chair. And uh, I think the drum uh, will be bang for a long time before we make a a decision or we hear about who's going to be in the role of Duke Nukem. So that's our news for today. What do you guys think? We got... uh, Uh, I'd also like to see Sony pull a move. So this is JBJ Blaze and TFA. I'd also like to see Sony pull a move similar to Xbox Play Anywhere. PlayStation Now was okay, but the input delay uh, was and is bothersome. Yeah, I mean, I think if we're going to get into this idea of uh, Netflix for games, um, it's got to be a little bit more open concept, right? This sort of locked, closed door kind of thinking um, is just hurting the business. It might be good for short-term gains, but in totality and it, it you know, it, against the threat of uh, the ubiquity of things like mobile or free-to-play games like, you know, League of Legends, the, the console business has got to open up, find ways to open up. And Play Now is a good idea and Play Anywhere is a good idea, uh, but a little bit more threading, a little bit more sort of uh, working together. Uh, you know, and I, you know, the Switch is doing so well with its unique sort of vantage point. Uh, and I don't know if that means that the Xbox and PlayStation should be thinking about something like that as well, where you're you're basically advertising your console experience <laughs> whenever you leave the house with, the, with your uh, Switch. And I think that is also, there's probably a lot of people that see these things on airplanes and in movie theaters and on, on uh, subways, and they go, mm, that guy's got that thing. That's amazing. I'm going to go do that. People aren't seeing that same kind of thing with Xboxes and Playstations. You know, it's kind of this, like, I'm going home to snuggle with my machine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know what I've been saying. I've been saying this for 20 plus years is like, look, let's find ways to get the conversation out there. Let's tell more people that video games are awesome. Let's be inclusive, exclusive. Yeah, it's not as not as great as it used to be. Uh, what did Sony ever do with Gaikai? Gaikai, that's from Paul Adams. A great question. Gaikai became PlayStation now. They built all the streaming tech. They bought them. They pulled them in. And then they, they turn them into PlayStation Now. Uh, Audrion Leon says, are you thinking of considering playing Dragon Ball Fighters? I've heard it's absolutely great. Uh, I've got a, a review code on the way, and uh, I'm thinking of uh, connecting with some folks over at Bandai Namco to uh, have a, a nice chat about the game and the their long-running partnership around Dragon Ball Z. I think that would be great. I'm super psyched to play that. Uh, we've got a review of Street Fighter V Arcade Edition coming up very soon on the show. Uh, if anybody else has a big question, have you noticed any questions, Blake? Uh, this one is answered. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, John Cena in talks to be Duke Nukem. Yeah. Says it all right there. Uh, right. Rod 27, perfect example. Hates that, uh, Spider-Man is a PlayStation exclusive now. That is kind of crazy, right? I mean, th- this is a character for everyone. It's a character for the world, except if you have an Xbox One or a Nintendo Switch. It's crazy. Uh, I almost wish that, you know, Sony would say, well, because they've got the movie, right? They've got dibs in there. I almost wish that they would say, look, we need to put this game on all the machines. I feel like that would be the right thing to do uh, for, for for their business, but for everybody else too, you know? I mean, Spider Man. Just like Batman and all the Lego games and all that stuff. And we're going to talk about some of these great uh, Spider-Man games very soon. But they, they should be crossing the streams. And, I, you know, it's a business decision. But I feel like, uh, yeah, that's a great example. That is an awesome example. And I, I, I don't want to dismiss exclusivity and people investing in, in uh, you know, getting their, their products out the way that they want to. Because that's where we see some real innovation and some, some great leaps forward in this this sort of, you know, reach to have privacy and find a way to get that stuff delivered exclusively. Uh, But it sure brings with it a lot of baggage that keeps a lot of people out. 
And uh, that's been my mission with EP from the beginning is to get people to come in and pay attention and, and care more and talk about this stuff more.